Let's talk about patterns in behavior and make sure that uh, you don't have any sort of patterns that maybe you're just not quite aware of. And if this video and uh, you know communication can bring that to light for you, then perfect, mission accomplished. This week, I wanna look at a communication that I got through our website. And it's, you know, somebody shares their story, so I'm not gonna, you know, put any names or anything like that in there. But, you know, if this person does watch, then, you know, I'm going to talk friendly and I'm just going to kind of point out, maybe there's, you know, if you look at the history, especially now that you've typed it out, and for us as viewers, now that we have it all written out for us, you know, are there any sort of patterns that maybe need to be addressed and that maybe continue to produce the same results and they're not exactly the most desirable results. So what I wanna do is just read through this all and while I read through it, you know, just be asking yourself, do you notice any sort of patterns? And when we come back, uh, you know, we'll kind of address it and just make sure and you know, we'll, I was gonna say talk about how patterns can be kind of risky but it's pretty self-explanatory after we get through it that yeah, you know, certain types of patterns it's not good as we're about to see. So this person says, hi Clay, first of all, it's such a nice switch to see someone adding a personal touch to their welcome emails. Thank you. Clay, I'm Canadian, 59, my wife is 69. I had to take an early retirement when I was 49 due to health issues. The large corporation almost killed me after 23 years in a cubicle. I gave my life savings to a financial planner and in 2007, he promptly lost 40% of that for me. Then in my desperation to regain some of my quote unquote life savings, or at least not to lose anymore, I bought 100,000 shares of a RET, R-E-I-T. Well, guess what? The RET went bankrupt and now I'm scrambling every day to build up a nest egg for retirement. I'm still very concerned as you're most likely aware. Canada's cost of living is crazy high and getting worse every year. I'm invested in to ICLD and I found you via the iHub site. I'm sitting on 708,000 shares of ICLD. Now, just kind of to, to finish off the story here with a little context, ICLD is a penny stock. So again, ask yourself, do you see any sort of patterns? And unfortunately, it's, come on, at what point are you gonna take the bull by the horns and actually learn and just stop randomly doing things? Now, I'll, I'll back off and at the get-go, okay, fine. You know, you give money to a financial advisor, but you know, this is just the big problem I have with financial advising, and I'll plug my one uh, investment course that I have. If you have just even a little bit of interest in the stock market, I'll put the link below. Check out my Grow Rich course, which is my personal plan that I map out step by step by step, which goes over how I'm gonna personally retire with millions. And it's guaranteed to work, the only catch being it takes like a long time. It doesn't happen overnight. It doesn't happen over five years. It doesn't happen over 10 years. It is a long-term strategy. But back to the financial advisor thing, the course literally will pay for itself via all the fees that you're going to pay a financial advisor. And in this person's, you know, think about it. They were paying fees for this person to lose them money. For me, I have an interest in the market. I might as well just lose my money, my own money, and not pay somebody else to lose it for me because the stock market is not difficult from a retirement perspective, from a long-term perspective. Yeah, there's things you need to look at. Yeah, there's a system and a process, but that's the whole point of that course. So that's the first thing. I'm not gonna bash them too bad there. Okay, they made the, the, the mistake of giving it to a financial advisor, losing 40%. And then what do they do? Because they're panicking, they go and now put it into a, a real estate investment trust, an REIT. 100,000, gone, bankrupt. And now what do they do? Instead of saying, you know what, maybe I need to tap the brakes, actually put together a plan, put together a, a strategy, they've gone and invested into a penny stock. And, and unfortunately, at the time of this recording, and you know, at the time of when they sent me this uh, message through the site, ICLD, that penny stock, is even lower by quite a bit than where it was at the time of the message. So another decision where I don't know if this person is still holding, um, but if I had to guess based off the kind of their, their past behavior, yeah, they're probably holding and just hoping right now that it recovers because they're already short on money anyways. So the point here being, hopefully you've noticed just the, the pattern of never really having a plan. And let me just tell you right now, I'm gonna, and I'm gonna research and I'm gonna invest in penny stocks, but I'm gonna research so I'm gonna find the good penny stocks. That's not a plan. In fact, that's a terrible plan. And that's probably what this person was gonna do. 
I'm not saying they just blindly bought ICLD. They probably did research, but they just don't understand the business, the game of penny stocks. And again, I'll plug another one of my courses because I'm super confident in it. The Penny Stock Survival Guide course I have. If they would have just you know, spent $197, that's it. And this person clearly has that, then they would have been able to construct a much better plan to approach the penny stock market. But this person just keeps, you know, they're in a panic, they're, they're making lots of bad decisions, but you know, take a step back if you're watching this, realize what you have, you're in a panic, panic mindset, but that's just causing you to do more and more irrational things. And for you as viewers, and I'm speaking to myself too as I say this, sometimes we find ourselves in ruts where you gotta kinda almost smack yourself across the face like, wait, why do I keep doing that? Why am I in this trade still? Why am I, you know, fill in the blank? And you stop and think about it, and you're like, wow, I, I keep doing the same thing over and over again, and what, you know, and expecting a different result. And that's the definition of insanity, right? I don't know who said that, but yeah, doing the same thing over and over and over again and thinking that you're gonna get a different result that's not a good pattern of behavior. So I'm not suggesting that you as a viewer are doing what this person's doing, but the whole idea here is patterns in behavior. How are the patterns in your behavior? Again, I'm speaking to myself too, because we're always gotta, you know, we gotta stay in our A game when it comes to the mental part of trading. And that's something you always need to be watching and being aware of is how are you acting? Not what are you thinking, because it's easy to think one thing, but how are you acting? What is your patterns of actual behaving? And you know, make sure that that keeps in check and is actually rational. And like I said, if this person is watching, maybe this is a, a kind of the slap across the face. You're like, yeah, I, I gotta slow down. I gotta actually figure out what I wanna do. Invest into some education, invest into knowledge because uh, my guess would be you're doing a bunch of random Googling searches, you're doing watching a bunch of random YouTube videos, and you're probably drowning in the sea of free information because there's no structure or anything to the information out there. So take a step back. Uh, and you know, hopefully you decide to really put together a, a true game plan and get yourself taken together or putting back together. For, for me and the rest of us, hey, let's just be on our A game and realize that patterns of behavior uh, you know, can dis be deceitful, but if we're aware of it, then we can stay on top of it and be proactive against it. One of the biggest questions I get is, hey Clay, how do you find the stocks that you trade? So what I've done is put together a free resource guide where I talk about the tools that I use to locate stocks that I find interesting and think may have potential. So if that sounds like something that could add value to you as a trader, then click on the image that is up on the screen right now and I will email you the guide. The guide itself is very short and to the point and best part, it's completely free. Thanks for watching the video. Let me know if you have any questions.